welcome. I'm Pam Laricchia from livingjoyfully.ca and today I'm here with Wendy Hart. Hi, Wendy. Hi, Pam. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Wendy is active online and I've enjoyed glimpses into her family's unschooling and homesteading lives for at least the past year or so, which is why I'm excited that she agreed to come on the podcast and share more about her family's unschooling experiences. So to get us started, Wendy, can you share with us a bit about you and your family? Absolutely. I just want to say thank you so much for having me. And it's such an honor and a privilege. Um, we just love all of your resources. So thank you. Um, I'm a, the mom of a, a family of three. And um, there's my husband and my daughter. My husband is in his 30s and he's a professional wrestler, a local wrestler. So you won't be able to see him on TV yet. <laughs> <laughs> and um, my daughter is eight. Um, and I am Wendy <laughs> and I'm in my 40s. And we've been unschooling for, probably, I mean, it starts really as attachment parenting, I think. Um, and we didn't really get that until about three. So uh, we've been doing this for five years now. So oh, that's, that's, that's a little bit about, we live in Ontario, Canada. <laughs> and I'm, an, I'm a children's book author and illustrator. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> I did not know about your husband's wrestling. That's very, very yeah. cool. My youngest son is into more physical pastimes as well. So that's such a cool connection. So oh, cool. You, you said that, um, I guess your daughter was about three when you found kind of attachment parenting. Um, so what did your family's move, like how did you find that? And how did your move to unschooling unfold in there too? That's a really, um, it's an interesting question because it actually starts more with the past, which is I actually have a 25 year old son. And so I did go with him through the school system. And um, so did my husband and myself. And we didn't feel that it suited us, that it worked for our families um, in any of the aspects or any of the timelines that uh, we tried it. So we, when we had hope um, eight years ago, we automatically were homeschooling for sure. But until about two, we didn't really have an idea what that looked like. And frankly, it really scared me because the idea of trying to be a teacher um, in school at home was terrifying. I didn't really, I didn't know that, but I didn't want to bring that to our home, but I didn't really cognitively know that. I just was looking for something. So I went looking for on, or homeschooling online. Um, and I found so many amazing resources on unschooling. It was just this new way of thinking, but that made total organic sense to us. When I started telling my husband about it, I said, they just live and learn. I mean, you don't have to do anything. They do read books and they, they do, uh, you know, arts and crafts, all the things that all of the things um, that you would do in school, but without any of the limitations um, or structure that was forced, um, and the stress that came from all of that, uh, because of course I already had put my son through school and it was so stressful. Uh, just the, the separation, the beginning of when you're like, Oh, my baby, they're going just was so painful. I thought, is that even something that we're supposed to be doing, you know, so our family anyway, not everybody. <laughs> um, so that was our first foray into there is another way and other people are doing it and they are credible and they are successful, not just the parents, but the, the children that are coming out of this. And so we started our, I guess it was, we started giving ourselves permission to look at a different way. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, it was amazing. I just, I couldn't believe it. It was such a discovery. Um, but, but at that point, we actually, we did cry it out method. Like we didn't, I didn't know. We only did it for 15 minutes. I say that now. Back then it made so much sense, um, this cry it out method. And now it breaks my heart every time I think about it. But th when um, she started, just, you know, she would not go to bed. She would not, we just had to listen to her finding unschooling and her refusal to go in her own room to bed kind of coincided together. Um, and we just, let's bring her in. Why, why stop? Why have these arbitrary, which we didn't know they were arbitrary, but these arbitrary rules, they're separating the bond between our beloved, you know, girl. So that was the beginning when she was three, we, she came into our bed and she started, you know, we just living learning was on topic. <laughs> That's so, so that cool. 
Yeah, there are so many connections in there. Cause so um, I'll start with that that last one there. So you, she was around that age. That's when you discovered um, unschooling when you were researching homeschooling. And and isn't that so interesting? This is one of the things I love is when you start asking one question, all of a sudden, like you said, didn't even realize these things were arbitrary. They just were the way things were right that's just what we're supposed to do and once you start asking one question the whole the whole world of questions opens up doesn't it oh yeah it unravels it just one leads to another you know like like that minesweeper game where you touch one and then you've got a whole pocket that opens oh, up yeah. yeah yeah that's what it feels like and you're like whoa whoa and it keeps <laughs> happening that's what i find it keeps happening do you recall just what it was when you um so you said she was around two when you thought you would start looking at homeschooling because you basically at that point knew you didn't want to in um use school right because of your previous experience so do you remember what it was it's like ooh, now is when i'm gonna go take a peek you know it was fear it was yeah. fear i was so afraid and i thought if i wait till she's five well, then I'm going to lose all of this time that I could, you know, maybe I can handle five minutes of looking at it and, you know, an hour there, whereas I'd have to do it all, you know, last minute if went to, she was school age. So I thought if I break it down in little small pieces to, uh, you know, make it malleable, then like, okay, maybe I can handle this. Maybe it isn't so scary. And right away I found, you know, the unschooling and it started to alleviate fear. I didn't have to do it that way. Maybe, you know, it's, it was a slow process. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. But, we, <laughs> but that first, I, I love that. Um, it was just kind of that first approach to fear. Cause so often fear keeps us locked in, right? You know, we, we get this tunnel vision mm -hmm. and we, we have no idea if there's an answer out there and, and you almost don't want to ask because at least if you don't ask, there's the possibility, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, Your worst fears can't come true, maybe, if you don't ask, yeah, right? You won't yeah, know. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly, if you don't do that. But but that what a great approach to think, okay, just, just maybe a little bit, a little bit at a time, instead of, you know, opening the floodgates to it. Let's just look a little bit. I love how you took that approach. That's wonderful. Well, I, I really, I because we have um, mental illness in our, or diagnosis in our in our family, both, um, I was diagnosed with uh, rapid cycling bipolar, which is fully under control and has been for, gosh, well, before Hope was born. So it's not even really concerned, I don't I think about the date. But um, my husband is um, diagnosed with um, TID, so he has multiple personality disorder. So we are a family in healing and conflict or fear, you know, just fear-based decisions, they're really take, we take them really seriously. We want to make sure we're not doing things because we're afraid and avoiding, um, but we'd want to make also sure that we're not overstimulating our triggers. So we, we step by step a lot. We baby step a lot. <laughs> that is such a wonderful point, Wendy. Thanks for, for bringing that up too, because, you know, that is something we have found in our life as well. You know, we haven't got, um, well, I guess we have, my husband's got a diagnosis, but um, that step-by-step -step approach to things has been so key in our lives for not letting that fear take over. You know, it's like, if there's a step in the direction that we're curious about, and there's nothing stopping that one step, let's take that one step and look around and see, you know, reminding ourselves that just because we take a step in that direction doesn't mean we need to go to that destination we see in the distance, right? To exactly. be totally open to reevaluating at every moment and seeing what we see takes so much of that fear of that first step away, doesn't it? Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah, and, oh, and that's amazing that you also have that. Um, so that's amazing that you also operate that way, that you're just conscious of like the emotional um, intelligence of this whole process. That's, it's, so I find that just really key. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. And your point too, because you take that one step and then when you know that level of self-awareness that is, is key, you know, you know, it's key for unschooling, but it's key. I think it's key at, at the foundation for people 
you know, so that we are self-aware of, you know, however we work, however our brains work, however our bodies work, knowing, you know, our triggers, knowing things that, that create fear in us, you know, knowing things that we're good at and the things that we can handle and the things that we enjoy so that we can, you know, step towards those, notice those and have all of that be part of the choice for the next little step, right? Absolutely. Yep. This, I love those details. I so agree. This is how I live my life and how I actually abate the fear. I, I, I don't, it doesn't go away, but it's mm-hmm. processed properly. Healthy. Yeah. Yeah. You know, fear, I think fear is a great clue, right? It, I'm not yeah. ever, you know, well, I'm not going to say not mm-hmm. ever because it was a huge part of the beginning of my journey. Right? Fear was, is, is a big piece and you shy away from it. And it's like, oh, that's scary. I'm going to go in the opposite direction until you start to learn more about yourself. It's like, okay, well, let's take a little step there and see. And you realize um, once you start kind of sitting with it for a bit, you start to realize where it's coming from and then you develop more self-awareness and you, and you come to understand it more than just be scared of it. Does that make sense? Yes. Oh, it makes perfect sense. That's yep. I, I think that that process is like been how we handle everything, not just on un- schooling, but everything. It just, when, it, when fear is in control, you, it's, you can't think straight. So it, there's there needs to be coping skills to be able to back away from it, you know, to see it for what it is. And then process, you know, where that root came from, how can we move past it? Oh yeah. That's, that's such a huge, a huge piece of it all. Like every, when that yeah. it would be noticing um, my fear reactions. Cause sometimes it would take a little bit to notice that I was stuck in that kind of fear place because you think you're just looking for safety, right? And, and I realize I get that tunnel vision and all of a sudden I can't see anywhere else to go, right? When you're stuck in that tunnel vision of fear, but then when I can acknowledge it and realize it and realize that if I take the time to sit with it a little bit and understand it, know that things will open up because it's not until I get kind of through that initial um, tunnel fear that I can actually start to see different steps that I might choose to take. (laughs) Oh yeah. That makes so much sense. You have to feel the fear and what it feels like to know how to deal with it. Right. I think that if we avoid it, we're never going to know where it came from. We got to go through that tunnel just and be able to look back and figure out what what can I do better? What, or what, what can I do differently? Not, maybe not better because that had to happen, but what can I do differently to avoid, you know, not needing to go through that again? You know, what if we could find a different way rather than, oh, uh, uh, panic. Okay. <laughs> I, I, love, I do. I, <laughs> yeah. I love that point because, you know, if you don't do that processing to kind of realize where it came from, you're going to keep walking into it again over yeah. and over, right? Because you don't know to step around those things like you were talking about your your triggers and the situations that just aren't um good healthy for us as individuals not that they're you know right wrong whatever for anyone else it's not about judging other people making those choices it's about knowing what choices work well for us right exactly exactly we're not all one size fits all so it's you know crazy to think that one size would fit all so so, and then, then when you came across unschooling, how that fits so well, right? <laughs> exactly. I was like, what? This is amazing. It's okay to and like think and make right? choices. And they're like, yes, yes. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah, exactly. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's what, well, that was an amazing detour to our question. <laughs> that might happen a bit. <laughs> I'm a bit no. of a detour taker. Can't help right? it. It's yeah, that no, mind sweeper thing. Man. I poke on it and then they just all open up. <laughs> it, that's kind of like my favorite thing about conversations is to see the connections <laughs> and where they go. And that, I think, you know, we were talking about your family's move to unschooling and fear can so often for people be a big component of that move because it is so unconventional, isn't it? Yeah, well, I mean, you can either, you know, choose to let that fear uh, keep you from it, or you can go through it and see, well, maybe, maybe there's something on the other side of it. So that's 
what we usually do and uh, it's worked out really good so far. Yeah, I'm not really really so far. I can't imagine living any other way really at all. I know because now it feels like living, you get to a point where it doesn't matter what path your future choices take you because you're still living and experiencing like each moment that way. That's the way you're going to approach any moment, whether or not you have kids in school, right? Yes, exactly. Well, I mean, kids exactly. not, kids of school age is what school I mean. School age, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know what you meant. <laughs> kids! <laughs> I do love to hear what unschooling kids are getting up to, so I was wondering what Hope's diving into right now and how you're helping her explore that. Oh, that is an easy question um, because honestly, since she was three, she's, I mean, she's interested in other things, but she is so passionate about animals. Um, from the time she was three, she has just everything to do with animals, whether it's playing, or doing coloring pages, watching videos. And since we saw this passion um, a few years ago, we started uh, volunteering at a farm that's local. Actually, that's what we're going to be doing today. Um, and so we volunteer at this farm where it's just hands on everywhere. It's really magical, to be honest with you. Oh. And so she can just touch chicks and goats and baby. They're all babies and they need the, uh, they, they work for movie sets. So the people <clears throat> come in and visit with the animals, socializing the animals. And then the animals are really great for um, the rest of the, you know, the, the rest of the patrons that come in or for movie shoots. So it's just, it's amazing. There's a camel, we, you know, we deal with horses and bunnies. The bunnies is a really big one. So she just always has, uh, you know, especially in the summer, it's all, it's only during the summer. Um, so we make sure we go as often as possible yeah. with, with, with her in mind. Um, like it's open four days a week, but you know, she can't handle four days a week. That's just too much, you know, over and over again, but at least two. And, you know, that's four hour stint. She's uh, volunteering and helping all these kids, you know, get, or uh, adults get to uh, hold the bunnies and um, um, feed the goats. Like, there's just so many amazing like, uh, experiences. So we just, that's a huge one, especially right now. So it's really fresh in my mind. Um, and then we also, we have a big piece of land. So we're always exploring the outside, uh, getting frogs from the uh, the pond or snakes that'll kind of come in. We do a lot of catch and release, always release. Um, she'll have pet snails um, that she'll bring in, you know, and, and be responsible for so they don't kind of go wandering all over the house, <laughs> which they will. <laughs> yeah, she's had them like all over her hands and, and her face. She's just just so hands-on with them. And we have, uh, we have pets, so that's something else that we've done to facilitate, you know, her just love passion with animals um, role play she loves role playing animals so um, all kinds of pretend play all of our movies are role play uh, animal her, her toys she almost has no Barbies they're mostly I mean I think maybe five her Barbie sections so over there um, <laughs> I was like I should look come on anyway uh, but she has a uh, you know some Barbies maybe five but I mean an entire I couldn't I could just an entire room full of animal toys just if she wants, you know, to play, it's usually animals. She just really connects with them, wants to care for them, learn about them. It's amazing, you know, and it's never wavered. I think that's, and if, and if we had have done school, there would have been so much interruption into this. So she's just been able to just go with it. And it's been amazing to watch um, that and role play. That's the second thing that she's into. If it's anything, if she's not role playing about animals, she's role playing about another subject she just loves. She loves to pretend play and role play. And uh, we're, we're actually LARPers, live action role players. So it, it kind of works well because we're always doing things like um, LARP games where we're pretending to be different things all together in a group. Um, we do that with our homeschool club and with, uh, with adults. So yeah, we're always, and of course, pretend play every day. I mean, with us and on her own. So just always in the world of make-believe. Um, that yeah. sounds amazing, amazing. And how cool that, how did you find that farm? Were you just, was that something that you already knew about or did you find it when you were looking around? No. Um, well, everybody who lives around our area will pass by this farm. It's called Big Curve Acres and there's this big sign on it um, on Highway 11. I, don't know if you, I know you are in Ontario, so you'll know you might ever, you know, go up Highway 11. So it is really easy to see um, up in the Oromodonte area. And um, so we passed by it so many times. 
And I kept saying, you know, to my husband, you know, we just got to check that out. I'm pretty sure they're open, but we couldn't find out when. So we finally found out that they're open to July and August, which is why it's really hard to, um, it was really hard to kind of find out when they were haphazardly because often when we were checking, they were closed. Yeah. So we just looked it up online and we started going there. Um, and because Hope connected so well with the animals and I, I, I work with animals as well. So uh, it was just a really good fit for us. And the owner noticed and she said, well, why don't you come here? you know, often, and you don't have to pay, you just come here and volunteer. And we were like, that's amazing. So that was like three years ago now. So we're just ending up our last or third season. So, so great. Well, I mean, I honestly had an amazing time there too. So <laughs> that's what we all do. Yeah. That's part of that. Take a little step, right? Take a little step and, and see. And yeah. That's the the one thing I found with my kids too. Like I learned through um, facilitating them, helping them pursue what they're interested in by um, that. That's kind of how I learned to be open and pay attention to things around me. So, you know, you're open to the conversation, you know, the owner could feel the, the um, kind of the open vibe of you guys and be comfortable approaching you to have that conversation and you're open to considering that it's just amazing how many connections kind of fall into place when you just stay curious and open to things right I love that. Yes. Yeah. Staying open. Yes. I, you know, I love that way of wording. I think I can, I think I'm doing it, but I love like putting things into terms because it just helps yeah. to not only help my brain more fully accept it, but just it also helps to quantify to others. So that really helps. Yeah. So yeah no. Being open. Yeah. yeah, that's true. That's true. To be able to describe something helps. It, it helps me too. My brain thinks that way too. <laughs> In kind of in, in little systems and, you know, oh, there's what that were. Because then then you can, you know, do it in different places. Once I figure out something, then, you know, more open. Yeah, and it, it started with just being open to what my kids wanted to do at home, right? What they wanted to do, uh, you know, watching them learn, watching them follow things, the, the strange but interesting paths that they took just playing at home. And then it was taking that outside and, and keeping that open and curious attitude when we were out and about, not just when we were at home doing our own things. The other question I yeah, wanted exactly. to ask you was about LARPing. Um, in that, <laughs> you mentioned that you and your husband like that. Did you guys, was that something you guys were doing before? Or was that something that uh, Hope, you discovered through Hope's interest? It's actually um, something that I've been LARPing for 20 years. Um, so, but I met my husband LARPing. I, I remember saying to myself a long, long time ago, thinking I am never going to marry someone who either doesn't like LARP or doesn't want to LARP. So just because <laughs> it's an open, very open way to be if you're going to LARP. So, um, you know, I, I really wanted someone who could be that kind of, that open, right? So be able to put themselves aside and maybe take on someone else. So, um, yeah, I met him LARPing. So. <laughs> Um, yeah, the background comes from before hope. Oh, um, that's so interesting. I have gotten the role play bug for me, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> well, being open for to me, it. it was just a really. Yeah, sorry. Yes, 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 for sure. Being open to it. Yeah, what, it's, what I love. I love for you. It was just for you. It was. It, it was the best social t uh, lesson I ever had. Like it basically took that fear. It, it was a way to go down that tunnel, um, but not notice it because I was playing. Um, LARP is a great way to really, um, you know, ex experience new ways of being that you would never have done before because you're given permission because it's a role. Um, and it doesn't have to affect the rest of your life, but it gives you, a, an insight into yourself that at least it did for me and I know it has to work for others as well that you just I just don't know any other way I've, I've had you know professional therapy and uh, all kinds of, of um, you know ways to deal with uh, fear and anxiety but this was just hands down the best way because it got past my oh I'm being taught something and went right through to my play which is I mean what we're all taught learning through play you know learning through it, that's it's the core of I honestly think what makes joy learning joyful um, <laughs> I didn't mean to say that but not that you're living joyfully but really it is true it's it's if you're having fun then you're you're gonna absorb it like a sponge 
So for me, it was, I could process my emotional stuff when I was LARPing, but I didn't know it. It took me like 10 years to kind of go through it and go, oh my gosh, I was playing, you know, all that way. And, and, and I learned so much and now I can bring it to the table with my parenting and, you know, the rest of my life. It changed my life. It really did. As much as unschooling did, honestly, it was just like the two for me, you know, really kind of makes a lot of sense together. Unschooling and LARPing. I'm sure not everyone would agree, but <laughs> it makes it sense makes, to me. It makes so much sense. No, it, it really, really does. And I love that insight, how it kind of helped you bypass, you know, your own kind of blocks, right? Because yeah. um, we get in our own way so so often, right? We are that fear. Yeah. We're taught from young age to judge ourselves so so harshly, right? Mm -hmm. And to be able to find a way to get past that to, you know, the openness and the play and, and to a way that we can, I was going to say be ourselves, but it, but it really is right. Even if you're taking on like different personas, except it's, it's still you, it's, it's, it's yeah. you being able to come out freely through a different lens, right? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, you could play at different parts of yourself, really explore with yourself. It is extremely introspective. Um, but again, you're playing. So, you know, you kind of go later and go, oh, look at that. You know, I, that was really amazing experience. But I had fun the whole time. I wasn't thinking this is very healthy for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. That's great. I love that. I love that. Um, okay, so what was your biggest stumbling block on the road to understanding and schooling? I'd be curious to hear that. I, I, I hate to keep being a, a broken record, but it's, it's fear. Like I was so afraid of, uh, we have some history with uh, being persecuted by an agency unjustly, um, which was proven. Um, but so it, it, it brought some real, tangible, actual fear to this let's go free and just do what we want to do with unschooling we were really concerned with how would we quantify that to authorities um, without bringing that fear to our lives but be prepared and it was a journey um, really figuring out how to do that because i I was i was and i still am afraid um but i feel protected i feel prepared i feel prepared there you go i feel like i've done the work to yeah, I mean, I won't say protected because I'm prepared is a better word. Um, because the ten, the fear is real. Uh, it was, it wasn't like I could just say, "Oh, that was," you know, what I was thinking about the moment uh, that happened. It was real fear. I really did. Uh, we did have a lot of trauma caused to our family because of that. I can't talk a lot about it just because it, it involves my firstborn son and there's a privacy issue. So I just wanted to explain yeah, why I'm being kind of vague because yeah. um, I'm very open and I love to be open. <laughs> but yeah. Um, but yeah, so we, we were carrying that and, you know, and, and as soon as we found unschooling, I thought, Oh, but what if, I mean, what are they going to say about this? I know how they work. So they're not going to be able to understand it. And I think that's where we were on the, the, uh, the road to figuring out how can we do this? Because I can't not do it. We can't not unschool. It makes sense. How do we get over this big, real fear? Um, so that was the big, <laughs> the big, the, the big, big thing. The stumbling blocker <laughs> wall. The stumbling blocker wall we had to climb over, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, so we just started. We just started putting, you know, things in place. We started researching, finding, you know, places like your website and and so many other resources. We're so, especially with grown unschoolers, it really helped to see I can prove to these people that there are adults who have gone through this and are wildly successful in ways that nobody's really quantifying except for maybe the unschooling community um, and seeing how amazing these people are, not just in their careers, but in their lives. They they're have coping skills that a lot of people aren't, don't have, and they've gone through these, these school systems that apparently are supposed to teach you everything, you know? So, <laughs> yeah. No, I do. I, I do Sorry. love that. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, that, I think... I think. So I'm just just guessing here, but it feels to me, you know, after all these years that you were you working through that fear, that big stumbling block and you personally had a reason for it. I think that what happens often is people have that fear in the back of their mind, you know, what if what if, you know, um 
in some places that need to do some homeschool reporting, et cetera, et cetera. You know, what if it gets questioned? What if, you know, even, of course, even here in Ontario, we can still be, you know, we can submit our letter, but, you know, a case can come up at any time. And we have that fear in the background, but we don't take that step to process through it, you know, because yeah, so often, you know, we can tell us, well, how likely is it? How likely is it? You know, for you, it felt more likely. So you took that time to do that research and you got to um, a much high, a higher level of comfort, I think, with moving forward because you felt that you could answer to those kinds of questions at any moment, right? If, if something ever came yeah. up. Yeah, whereas I think a lot of people fear it push it down um, and it's only once and it's true I mean you don't want to be stuck in a place where you think it's likely and you see it coming all over but to be able to get to a place mm -hmm. where I mean I did it too you know I to a place you know what if what if something happened to myself what if something happened to myself and my husband you know went through that and and came up with like backup plans well there's this and you know this is where I didn't mean creating a file folder full of cases to be able to hand over but it was knowing that all that knowing the stuff was there for me to grab when needed like you were talking about knowing there were grown on schoolers out there that you could get information from that there were websites that there were some reports I know in Canada we talk about that Fraser Institute report um, you know, quite a bit, you know, there are um, alternative education um, courses, even at in the education um, systems at university, like learning teachers colleges and stuff like that in the graduate programs anyway, you know, so to know the stuff that's out there that we could then go deeply into if we need to was a step close enough that I could release that fear without without bringing it too far into my lives and, and living it for too long you know what I mean living it with it right yes you don't want to live with it that was my and I I did I lived yeah. for fear with fear because it did happen to you before you know my my uh, daughter was born or hope was born um I was really I lived in fear and I think it was discovering um how I had to find a way to unschool and feel comfortable and not live in fear and I really think it helped me process a lot of that backlogged fear that I didn't even know I was carrying until I had to because I still lived in in fear you know even when we weren't worrying about schooling about the, the agencies that I had experienced so this just like really helped me not just work out how would I unschool without fear with hope um, and our family, but how can I get rid of all of that backlogged, you know, fear that had nothing to do with unschooling. So it was like, honestly, unschooling healed us because we had to go in and forward through to it. So yeah, mm -hmm. it was, <laughs> what a great I, I want to say uns maybe unschooling is healing for, for us. It really was, it was really healing. Yeah. I, and I think that can be, um, something completely unexpected. If you really, um, take seriously that the de-schooling process, right? Is you don't realize how much weight you're actually carrying until you start, you know, asking yourself those questions, opening yourself up to those questions, wherever those questions go. Cause like, you know, so often they seem totally unrelated to unschooling or education per se, but the weight that you're carrying around, everything's connected, right? <laughs> Yes, no, it really is. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. Everything's okay. Okay, so <laughs> let's flip this around to a brighter note. What has been your biggest aha moment so far on your unschooling journey? Uh, that that's again easy just because it was one led to the other. The fear brought the eventually through that tunnel, once we got through that tunnel that you were talking about, it was the realization, you know, that living is learning. You you don't have to do anything to learn. You just need to wake up and do what is, you know, what your health. I'm not saying that, that maybe in the past, if I was, I was still living, learning, I was still, you know, doing it, but I mean, it wasn't in a healthy way. Um, we definitely aim for a healthy life. We're not uh, trying to just do whatever, but um, you know, 
you don't have to do and you don't have to go anywhere. You don't, there's no requirements. There's no requirements for education. It is just living, learning. And once that kind of came in, um, it was, it opened everything. It was, there was no, uh, there was no limitations. It was, it was just, you know, all the things that school had taught us um, were gone because they, it, they were wrong. <laughs> you know, you can learn in school, but you don't have to learn in school at all. In fact, we learned so many things outside of school. I have taught myself how to play piano. I've taught myself how to song, right? Um, I've taught myself all kinds of like how to blog and, and vlog and all kinds of things. And I never thought that I would do, let alone, you know, maybe be good at. Um, so just, just by living, by following our interests, our what things that make us happy, you're always learning. And that's just so simple. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. Yeah, it, that's sim Those, the biggest aha moments are how simple things boil down to, right? When you just get to that foundation. And I love your point that, of course, we can learn in school, but we don't have to learn in school. And that we are always learning when we're living, like learning, we're, but I'm trying to say this, but with unschooling, we're taking away that layer like so often in school what they're learning isn't specifically or only about the topic right they're learning so much about um <clears throat> control structures and power structures and um yep. extrinsic motivation and you know those are the underlying things that they're picking up from the environment right whereas yeah that's a really good point yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, they're still learning. They're learning like crazy. They're just not learning what they're trying to teach them. Right. They're trying to, I don't want to generalize no too much. Right. But, but you know what I mean? They're, they're picking up yeah. so much. Um, so the learning that they're doing is stuff that they don't, that parents and teachers you know, and the system in general aren't so happy about them figuring out, you know what I mean? So that's, yep. that's when you start getting into these, um, power struggles with them, et cetera, you know, is when, is when that isn't in alignment. So that's the point I was trying to make with the unschooling. We're trying to keep all that, that learning in alignment with, with the living. Right, maybe maybe that that's right. Not stuff. <laughs> There's no like like <laughs> under undercurrent. There's a social programming in school that you know I'm, everyone knows that that I mean that it's it's the truth, right? So mm -hmm. if you if you're going to put those two together, like for me personally at school, um, my biggest I always say um, not only that I didn't maybe learn as well as I could, but um, it was more just I couldn't social I couldn't separate social the social aspect of it and the, and the education or their academic aspect of it. It was too much to combine um, because the social aspect was highly volatile. I mean, it, it really is kind of a cutthroat environment going into school. Um, you're not with your family. You have to make all of these new friends and you have to, there is no choice, especially in the beginning. So it is, it is a, you know, a really, especially for maybe people who are emotionally anxious, you know, kids, it's really stressful. And then you put academics on top of that. That's just not a really good combination for a lot of people. So it's yeah. definitely not for me. Yeah, that's a great point. And, and then even if you just look at the academics too, what are they learning through the environment? You know, that what you're interested in and what you want to learn about isn't as important as, you know, what we think you should learn about. And you learn on yeah. this timetable and, you know, um, there's just and it's so not many important. messages they learn through that, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I, I agree with you completely. <laughs> Um, you mentioned learning how to blog and that you're a children's author and your, uh, children's book and your blog, your website is called free schooling, which I love. So I would love to hear a bit about the story behind that name. How did that come about? I'm actually kind of glad that there's actually a story to tell. It's not really much, but I was just, <laughs> when we, when we named it, when we decided, because during this, um, during this journey of trying to figure out how are we going to go through this, this wonderful unschooling way of life but still feel not afraid. Um, mm -hmm. And I thought the best way to do that would be to draw community to us 
and to seek out community. So, and the only way I'm, I'm, I'm kind of a, I'm an introvert, extrovert in that I'm being out, but I still have a lot of anxiety. So online is really great. And I thought, what a better way to do it than, you know, to start a page. I'm a visual learner. So I thought I could just take our pictures and, you know, but we weren't really sure what we were going to, you know, we knew we wanted to do it about unschooling, but we weren't, didn't really have a, an idea. And my husband, uh, Jace is like, you know, what about free schooling? And I was like, Oh, that I really love that. That's great because we are, it's free freedom and it is schooling. So it kind of gives that for people who are trying to look for us, they're trying to, you know, it gives the, uh, just that feeling of education. Although, you know, I'm not, we know that living is learning. <laughs> so I just wanted a name that really suited it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. So I just shortened it with a free school in and a little, you know, a little comma there or apostrophe and that's kind of what we started with our page you know, a few years ago. And then I started blogging because that just seemed the next progress, next step. And, and it was, it was really great to be able to connect with people and just talk, you know, openly. I was really um, shy at first. So it really helped me with, with a lot of my social anxiety too. And we got so much community um, connected to with the, you know, for our, for hope. So it was just great, great decision but it was scary at first <laughs> um but yeah so that's it we saw on the page you know we did that and then then the blog we have our website so that's really fun and i, I learned web design because so i designed my whole website you know and i you know did the art for it so that was just a really fun experience <laughs> always living learning right yeah yeah exactly it's it's but such then, a it's a fun creative outlet isn't it to figure that stuff out <laughs> it, it really it, yeah I went, i'm a, i'm an artist i've always loved to draw and um, so I just, you know, actually that's how the book came around. I was just drawing the cover of the book. Um, I don't have it right now, but you know, the, I was just drawing the cover and, uh, I, I said to my husband, I was like, I should really, this should be the cover of a book. This should be the cover of like a children's book. And I should write that book, you know, and it just kind of all came. So I was like, you know, experiencing my creativity and then it kind of all came organically and that ended up being the cover of the book, which is why it's a little bit more, I don't know, basic uh, as far as the illustrations go, but I love it because it's original, so I wanted to keep it. Um, and it's just a beautiful labor of love. My husband uh, uh, formatted it and published it. So, you know, we're self-publishing. We have a little publishing company, Heart to Heart Publications. So yeah, it's um, it's been an amazing journey and I would all attribute it to unschooling because we were doing it all for that and then it all kind of became about it. It's just, it's an amazing experience. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I love that. I love that story. That's very cool. I love how it developed. And, and I mean, that's a good point too about having, you know, free schooling, having the school reference in there because so often, at least right now, that's how people originally find us, right? Because when you're stuck in that school paradigm and you're looking for something different, you're kind of searching out from there. And, you, you know, that's why I don't mind the term unschooling either, because you want to kind of con connect with them where they are and show them other possibilities, right? Like, is it just being open yeah, I love to that? Yeah. <laughs> I just love that you, that's exactly what I was thinking. It's like you took the words right out of my head. Yes, that's exactly what I was thinking when I, when we did it and all along through, you know, I, I just wanted to kind of relate to them so that, you know, they would understand, you know, and yeah, that makes sense. That's yeah, I mean. because then it doesn't set it up, you know, an us versus them kind of thing, right? You're just trying, you're happy to connect. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> oh yeah I, I, I'm we're doing this to learn from others for sure like the yeah. only like the best thing about the whole thing is connecting with others and learning more deeply how they were living so that it helped us figure out how to better live our lives so examples are amazing yeah, how we learn really the best mm -hmm. thing we learn. so true like but the, me right to <laughs> to learning connections right well I mean everybody learns that way through making connections everybody just makes a unique their own unique combination of connections, right? And and they all in in different directions, in different environments, you know, some like more social engagement, less introvert, extrovert. I mean, that's why it's so unique for every single family, right? You know, when they come so often looking for, well, okay, if I don't do school, what do I do here? And they're kind of looking for that set of kind of rules to follow to do this. 
and why, you know, that doesn't, that doesn't work out very That's, well at all because yeah. everybody's so individual, right? And what if I actually, you know, gave a step-by-step outline of the actions we took three steps into <laughs> it, it's not going to work for the next family down the line, right? <laughs> So, I mean, that's why yeah, exactly. that's not something that I share, but it's why I still love all these conversations with everybody with the podcast because it's so different and I'm still learning like, you know, some of the stuff that we've already talked about, you know, today have been amazing insights and little connections for me. And it's, it's just so fun to learn, isn't it? <laughs> That, yes, it's exa- exactly. Yeah. Living, or sorry, learning is fun. And I think that was something I had to learn. I had to learn the living or learning was fun because I did not think it was, you know, I had a serious math issue. I yeah. did not do math, but it was through like Yahtzee and budgeting. And eventually, you know, I de-schooled de- myself long before I was unschooling. Well, I guess I guess I was unschooling. I just didn't know it at the time because I was, I wasn't parenting, um, you know, um, unschooling at the time. I was just doing it to myself. But I taught myself how to add. I taught myself how to do all of that. I didn't learn it in school. They they bypassed me. They tried, but I just couldn't absorb, you know, it in that way. Um, mm-hmm. It's interesting that you say that that you know there isn't a rules, you know, um, because that's right. There is no step by step, and that's why there isn't one defined. You know, no one's doing that because it's just not. It's not. It, it's different for every family. And that's why our next book, um, the one that I'm writing is the one rule of free school. And is there are no rules to free school in, um, (laughs) to talk, to tap on that. Right. I just thought it was funny that you said there's no rules. I'm like, how the book. So connections. (laughs) I know. I know. Right. And then when I think about it, you know, that last book that I wrote, the unschooling journey, right. But those aren't, those are universal human stages to a journey they aren't you know specific rules or take this step or take this step but you know this kind of de-schooling phase is in general going to hit these signposts along the way right oh yeah i love that too <laughs> that is awesome that's awesome yes the signposts that's yeah great. yeah and just to let everybody know i will have links in the show notes to all of wendy's stuff as well um, so our last question, which I love to ask, what's your favorite thing about your unschooling lifestyle right now? Um, I don't know if it will always be, but I'm assuming it's because it's freedom. It's the freedom. You can, there's no limitations. There's no, nothing holding us back. It's just, and it's, it's for everyone, for the whole family. When we go and do something, we're learning like big care bakers, as I mentioned earlier, we're doing it because we all like it. We're not, we don't do a lot of things where um, just maybe only one person because we don't, you know, if that is the case, then, you know, we'll go ahead and, and facilitate it for them. But for the most part, we're doing things together because you really don't, there is no age, you know, involved in this. It's, you're always learning and it sets you up straight into, you know, until the end of your days, you know. I, 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 it's amazing. I, and it, yeah, just at that part, it's just amazing that there is no limitations. It's total freedom. I totally love that. And that was one of the huge um, aha moments for me was the realization that we're learning at all ages. Right. And that there's no like learning timeline as in you need to know this by this. That's where the whole, oh, you know, the question that always comes, what about gaps? What about gaps? Well, there's only gaps if you have an expectation that a thing's going to be learned by a certain time. And if you're not living within that timeline, you're living within meeting your own learning needs and interests. You know, you're going to meet it when you meet it, when it comes up in your life, when it's interesting to you, when, when you have a need for some, you know, I want to get, you know, three steps down here. And my first step's going to be, I need to learn this to keep going down that path. Then if you want that, that you're going to, you know, apply yourself to, to learning that at that point. Like there's the whole worry of gaps disappears when you realize you can learn things at any age, at any time. Right. The freedom yeah, to learn absolutely. at any time. Yeah, that's a, it's an amazing way to live. <laughs> oh, 
It's for free schooling, right? (laughs) Well, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me today, Wendy. I really appreciate it. I had so much fun. Thank you. This has been an amazing experience. I love discussing this with you and I absolutely adore you. So thank you so much for the opportunity. Oh, thank you so much. I loved our conversation. I had so much fun. And before we go, where's the best place for people to connect with you online? Um, it'll be our website. Um, so if you just Google free school in, it'll come up to our, I think our blog comes up first. Yeah. yeah. So free school in, just so you know, it's not free schooling, it's free school in. <laughs> so some people, it's, yeah, it, you have to do that other way. But yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Then, yeah. Oh, no problem. Well, and, and like I said, there will be links to, uh, to your website in the show notes. And I know I use the contact page there to get hold of you. So mm. it works wonderfully. <laughs> Thanks so much, Wendy. Have a wonderful day. So grateful. (laughs) 